Welcome in. This is the NFL recap, week 13. Well, week 12. Week 12. <laughs> recap, oh, well, recap of 12. 13. Yeah. Man, I'm off to a stellar start. <laughs> this is brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South premier gambling destination. We want to thank them for sponsoring the show. I'm going to get right down to it. All right. I'm starting with my Cleveland Browns, who oh, are Lord. on. They, they've got two wins in a row. That is called a winning streak, and I'm very excited about that. <laughs> I could imagine. So, in talking about this game, let's start with the losing team. Jason Lock and Fora, Sunday, the day of the game, released a report for CBS that says the Bengals are considering moving Marvin to the management position in the front office, which has been talked about for the last couple of years. That's nothing new. And they're talking about promoting up the newly rehired Hugh Jackson. Is is, is that insane? The owner, What criteria is there to be the head coach of the Bengals? Uh, the owner has to like you. What does he like about Hugh? Hugh is not a very likable person. I think he was. I think he was uh, really likable. I, I thought that, and as soon as he lost his job in Cleveland, all that the guy, players hate that him. guy went. No, but not just the players. That guy went on a tour, talking about throwing everybody under the bus, talking about nothing was his fault, no personal accountability. If you were drafted in his time in Cleveland by another team and you became a star. He had you at the top of the board and was fighting like hell to draft you, and nobody would listen to him. And if you were a bust, he didn't want you at all. Like, it's all the stuff that's, like, perfect in hindsight. Yeah. And and I just think you're the most disingenuous person I may have ever watched on TV. It's it's possible. Like, you, I, I thought you that he was somewhat likable. You can't be a leader likable. in a locker room and be disingenuous. You just can't be. I thought he was – likable on Cowherd um and whatever other show he went on on I mean, he Fox. went on first take and you know, he went on yeah. he, he did the he did the car wash on ESPN I mean he he went around he went all around telling his side of all these stories but every show he went on his story was different yeah that's that's what's weird I don't know it was it, he he comes across as likable but I I could see where you're coming from as far as the disingenuous side of it um not a fan. Not I, a fan. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm not a, I'm not a huge fan of his. I could see where owners, he's a politician. Okay, now he's, that he he's, is, he's, he's Mac Brown without the success. Yeah, he's, he's definitely just a, a liar that says what he thinks people want to hear, depending on what room he's in. Yeah, that, that and, happens. And depending on the person, which the people that he's around are super wealthy, and they want people to kiss their rear ends. The the bank. How did you get in? How do you get this much money to own a team, and and be in management, making the amount of money these guys make, and be this dumb? Well, because at one point they weren't dumb, but they just as, got dumb over time. Well, as you I go, don't, I don't know on, if that happens, right? Does that no, happen? It absolutely happens. Yes, oh, there, man, people that are that are CEOs and whatnot, they are they're in a fishbowl. Like it's it's the truth, and it yeah. like working men like you and I, we would be the same way eventually. You think? Like I, I, man, I, hate, I like I like to think that I would never be that guy. Oh, it, it, look, listen, I, I'd like I the opportunity to try. Well. I'd like the opportunity to try. Anybody wants to hand me a couple million dollars and a lot of power, I, I would say that as well. But and if, let me see if I get corrupted or it, become an idiot. Yeah, sure. A couple of million is different. Well, most people consider me an idiot now. That's okay. A, a couple of million dollars is one thing. You can still be smart and be a millionaire. A couple hundred million dollars being an NFL owner. A couple hundred million, a couple billion. Oh, God. At that oh. point, you're talking generational if I wealth. Ever, I will tell you this. Okay, if I ever hit the Bs, I, yeah, yeah. The, the, yeah, you get dumb. The, the size of the asshole that I am now would just, there's, there's no there's no way to measure what that would become. Let me give you some numbers. I got I got a couple of numbers for you. Baker uh, Mayfield's stats in the last three games without Huey. 74% completion, nine touchdowns, only one interception, 129.5 QB rating, and one dead body of Hugh Jackson. <laughs> it wasn't just Hugh Jackson. It was Damian Woody, too. Damian Woody, too. Damian Woody goes on he, ESPN's he first Damian take Woody. 
and he tries to compare Baker. He tries to take shots at Baker, saying, you transferred. How is that any different than Hugh leaving and taking a job? Well, well, first, this is actually something that I like about Baker, and and this is not the homerism of, of liking the Browns. I just find this refreshing. There's an athlete out there that's absolutely willing to stand up for himself. When Colin Cowherd, before the season started, criticized him, he was like, hey, I want to go on that guy's show. I want to go on that guy's show, and I want to call him out. Yeah. When when Damian Woody and all those guys on, on first take were mocking him, he immediately goes to Instagram, boom, blast him out, calls him out, says, hey, I didn't have a scholarship. Like, like I, I had to find a place to play because my scholarship got pulled. Yeah. And, and, well, his and that, scholarship didn't get pulled. He just never got one. Yeah, he did. Well, yeah, well, he okay. was a walk on. Yeah, he was, he was a walk on. He did not have a scholarship. And it, because they did not offer him one, he said, All yeah. right, well, um, I was good enough to win the starting job here, and y'all still don't want to give me a scholarship. I'll go somewhere else. I'm going to go to Oklahoma. Yep. And, and I, I understand they got five stars at quarterback there, but, you know, I'm going to go to Oklahoma and see right. if I can. I'll walk on there and I'll try and earn one there. And. Like the ultimate, like believe in yourself. Kind oh, of thing. oh no, he bet on. It was himself. awesome. Well, the the biggest thing is, is, is I don't think I don't have a problem with Hugh taking the Bengals job, but but it goes to the disingenuous part of Hugh. Like he talks so much about play for me, play for no. You never play for a coach. You never play for. He Not tried to get Baker to believe in him. And and as in believe in Hugh, not believe in himself. Well, but Hugh never believed in him anyway. And and it was just one of those things where now you're going to leave, and then as soon as the game's over with, you want to act like we're BFFs. Dude, we were never BFFs. We were never best friends. Like, you you stay never over wanted there. me to play. Yeah. You stay over there, and, and I'm going to do my thing. And he's doing his thing. Oh, yeah. He's, he's he absolutely doing his thing. Hey, Freddie Kitchens has a, a 100% gotten himself an OC job not with Cleveland it, though. It, well in the NFL yep um this, or or in college if he wants this to is, I've, this I've is heard what rumors I, of him going to uh, Tennessee this is what I don't want to see as much as I love what the Browns are doing I do not want to see them talk themselves into hiring this coaching staff and say oh look how great they're playing well they've Let's beaten, just keep they, all the they, guys we got they beat two bad teams I like agree. I, I don't think they're going to get to that point uh, but I mean, the Haslam's have done. I would like crazy to see them continue before. to win. I would also like to see them make sure they hire a real football guy. Yes. So, anyway, I don't think we'll, John Dorsey will let them keep Greg Williams. God, I hope not. We're moving on. The New Orleans Saints are on a roll that I haven't <laughs> seen since the New England Patriots 2007 season. Tell me I'm wrong. That's the undefeated season oh, yeah, no, where I, I, they wrecked the NFL. Is there any other team that's – no, I, man, these guys are – you know, I, I heard an interesting stat the week, other day. Week one, they laid an egg. Week two, they laid an egg but still came up with a win. Week three, they figured it out, and they have not taken yeah. their foot off the gas pedal. I heard an interesting number. So it, Ten in a row. Well, it, ten in a row, but, uh, but the number that I heard was – they um, what was it? They've got fifty-five different personnel sets that oh, they can use that, at that any does not point. Surprise me. That is an astounding Drew, number. Drew Brees is out here throwing to dudes that I have never heard of before. We threw to four different guys like on Thanksgiving night. Yep, and uh, like threw touchdowns to them. Correct. And what three of them? It was their first, first career, first NFL touchdown. Or no, it was two of them. It was their first, and then another one. It was like his second, but the first one was like years ago. It it doesn't matter if you if he you get on the field, the you got a chance to catch touchdowns. He and he's putting the ball in places to where if you're just a capable, competent receiver, it just falls in your hands. Yeah, I Tom, I don't remember Tom or Peyton being this accurate throughout this long of a stretch. Now, I saw games where it looked like Peyton Manning, we, we call them long handoffs, but, but I mean, he just was just literally putting the ball in their hands at the perfect speed and the perfect touch and everything. But but those were games? Yeah. this You're talking at least seven games straight. I don't know that he's made, like, an inaccurate throw that wasn't just thrown it away. Now, against the Vikings, he didn't look great. Well, like, even this game... Uh, on a Thursday, 
I mean, he oh, only he had was... like 200 yards. I mean, he didn't have like a ton well, of yardage. It, that, that's because Mark Ingram ran no, for 115 they're yards. Just, and... They're just crazy efficient. Yeah. I mean, they he are... doesn't have to put up 300 yards, 400 yards every game. No, but he, he's got the highest QBR in the history of the league at this point. No, it's not, it's not close. I, what he's doing is pretty remarkable. Yeah. There's guys that are having career years right now that I think, man, they should get more credit. You know they, what's they, crazy? They shouldn't get as much credit as Breeze. Patrick Mahomes has like a QBR of one seventeen, which would be the highest of all time at this like at this point in the season. Except Drew Breeze is like one twenty one no, or he, something. He's just, he's just blowing him away. I mean, it's crazy. Like he's it's, blowing him away. Yeah, I'm I'm with Phil, you. This Phil Saint Rivers is, is having a career year. Like it's not even seventeen close. years in, and it's sad that it's like any other year he'd be an MVP candidate, but Breeze is like bah. In the, still in, in my rear view. Rivers and Eli Manning came in at the same time, and Eli is like this broken down old man, and and, Bre- and Rivers is just killing bl- it, killing it, straight killing it. Yep. Uh, I, I mean, it's yeah, yeah. That's just it. So we'll move on. There is. We used to do sound effects, Gary. Back in the day when we were we were. When we were audio only, and we were really str- struggling quality wise, sometimes we had we had a little sound effects board. I I really wish we had a bells like a funeral bells sound effects board for when teams are just dead or when a player is just dead and gone, because we need bells for Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers. I didn't think about that. We 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 need funeral bells. Gimme bells. For Aaron Rodgers' dead body for the 2018 season. I think They're I done. can make that happen by next week. They're done. This team is done. And and last night, well, last night, we were recording this Tuesday, Sunday night, they were trying so hard to say, well, man, you know, maybe the Packers, like their schedule gets easier. Maybe they run the table. and they, come, Like, dude, come they're 4-6-1 they're right now. This team is not great. And here's the problem. They got talent. We're not we're not going to give him the excuse that they don't have talent. Aaron, Aaron Jones is a very capable, confident running back. Offensive line is not the worst in the league. Plenty of offensive line out there way worse than them. Houston's offensive line is the worst in the league. They, they're not having problems scoring. Aaron Rodgers is supposed to be the best quarterback in football. Nope, that's not true. You know, I I, I don't I don't know how many. And then they want to blame it all on McCarthy. Now I don't think McCarthy's the best coach in the NFL, but but he he damn sure ain't the worst. No, he ain't the worst. Like I think there's just like I think there's chemistry problems, I th- along with a slew of other things, right? I, I like think the a defense, person that I, is openly a negative person has has a lot to do with that chemistry problem. Though. Well, and that's that's what I'm that's what I'm getting at. I don't know that getting rid of McCarthy fixes your chemistry problem because because it puts the negative person in a better mindset, maybe. All right, but now then that, you, like that that so person, Aaron Rodgers. For those that don't know what we're talking about. Uh, I think Aaron Rodgers is like he has got it in his brain that McCarthy is the problem. Okay, so and now I, we're and the media end up might a, have been part of that problem. We're, we're going to end up with a LeBron James situation where they're going to let Aaron make the head coaching hire. Yeah, and you're going to end up with a guy that's not great, but he makes Aaron happy. But then they still lose, and now Aaron's not going to be happy. And at some point, his contract's going to end, or he's going to demand a trade, or whatever. And now you're stuck with this coach and this contract that you've signed for the coach. It, it's just a bad idea to let superstars control your front office and control your personnel moves. Yeah. I so far, Green Bay has not done that. I'm very curious to see: Are they going to do that? Yeah, I'm. I'm curious. I am shocked that every week, every announcer, whoever calls those games. Whoever writes and talks about the end of it, they just make excuse after excuse after excuse for Aaron. They don't do it for anyone else. When Cam Newton has a bad game, oh, he's just bad. You know, oh, he can't throw the football. He can't do it. Like, like you don't make excuses for him. Yeah. Well, he's got Riverboat Ron. I mean, who's got a better coach? I'd rather, I'd sure rather have Mike McCarthy than than Riverboat Ron as my head coach. I don't know, man. I like Ron Rivera. I like him as a defensive <laughs> guy, but if you're an offensive quarterback that's supposed to be the best in football, he's got, you got Norv Turner. You got an offensive mind. They were he they were fine always, until always, the last. He hasn't always had Norv Turner. Well, no, but he's got him this year. <laughs> he was an and MVP were, candidate with Shula. 
with Baby Shula. How crazy is that, right? That, that Mike Shula. Aaron Rodgers has one of the best quarterback coaches to be his head coach and play caller as anybody in the league. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty much Andy Reid, Sean Payton, and him until Sean McVay came around. But for yeah. the last decade? Well, Matt, Mc, Matt Mc, Nagy's come up pretty – But Nagy's new, too. Like, I'm talking Andy, about for the he, last – He's from for, the Andy Reid. For Rodgers' entire career, his entire career he's, – He's had a top three quarterback coach. He's had, he's had one of the top three guys that you would want in the NFL as your head coach if you're a quarterback. And now, all of a sudden, he's not good. Now, yeah. all of a sudden, today, we don't like him. Yeah, no, yeah I'm with you. Bells. Funeral bells Funeral for Rodgers. <laughs> Ding. All right. This up, we're going to get to points where I'm just going to make statements or ask questions. The Houston Texans started off 0-3, and we were we were chiming bells for, for Bill O'Brien. Bill O'Brien, yeah. They're now 8-3. and I'm going to ask the same question that I've asked for the last couple of weeks about this. What the hell is going on here? Like, what that was, what do we do with this? That was a strange game last night. And before, Marcus Mariota went twenty two out of twenty three for three hundred six yards, one of his two best touchdowns games of the year, like second they highest seventeen points ever, and and they they only scored seventeen points. Now they gave up like the rushing yardage in that first half. Now, granted, one of them was like a 99-yard touchdown yeah, run, and another one was like, what, 78? So it's a, it it a couple of big bust runs. It, I mean, they had like nine rushes for 169 yards. <laughs> like, I mean, it was just insane. Um, no, it. I, I can't. This is the first game that the Texans have just. Like, kick somebody's butt. Yeah, they just like they just won. Yeah. It, but now, All the rest to be of fair, them have been. Holy Bill O'Brien literally run off field saying, "Holy crap, how that happened? Yeah. Oh my god, how did I win this game?" Now, to be fair, the Texans every single season beat the crap out of the Titans in Houston. Yep, every year. That this is just something that they have done. Like last year, they beat them what fifty eight to fourteen or something in Houston, and that was like a bad Texans team. Yeah. So I, I, I can't, I can't figure this out. And I, so I texted you last night this, and and, and some other guys were in a group text with. I I don't know what it is, but I watch Mike Vrabel on the sidelines and he's making his notes, he's watching he just looks like a leader. Like I know they're getting blown like they're getting dominated. And yeah. they're not looking great. Defensively, they're definitely not looking great, and he's a defensive guy. But I just feel like he's got this calm about him. I was like, you know what, that guy's he knows what's going on. Like he knows they're gonna lose this game, but but they're gonna keep fighting. I don't. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm just super biased. I'm. I'm kind of all in on Vrabel being a good coach. Oh, I'd now buy it's, that. It's real that early, 100%. and he hasn't shown a lot. But I just, I, I feel like he looks like he looks good on the sidelines. Do, what you're trying to say is he carries himself well. He he really does. He does. He does. And I I agree with you on that. I think he will be. I see in him. Time. And I see Bill. I see Bill O'Brien. I think just looking at these guys. Man, I'd, I'd like to play for that guy. That guy, uh, he's a little sketchy. A little questionable. This guy, this guy, I'll play for them. Bill O'Brien always looks panicked to me. He looks shocked running off the field saying, holy crap, how did I win that game? Holy crap, how did yeah, I win he, that game? He always looks like he... He didn't last night. They kicked the crap out no, of the No, they did, but like even still, at certain points, he looks uneasy. <laughs> I like, all the time. I don't know how... Like, they... Vrabel looks like he is... In command of the situation, they're getting they're even getting the when they're getting boat raced. Yeah, yeah, and and he just looked like he knew exactly what was happening. Making those little notes, knows exactly what's going on. Yeah, he's like, all right, we're not going to be good this year, but eight zero is a big deal in the NFL. That doesn't happen. That does not happen in the NFL. Well, the it's so going from zero and three to eight and three has never happened. Well, no, that's never happened. But just winning eight straight, there aren't a lot of teams that have ever done that. I mean, the Saints did it this year. Well, the Saints did. I mean, obviously, the but Patriots the, have done the it multiple Saints, times. Like, you're like, talking about elite-level teams have done this exactly. seasons. Are, do we think they're elite? If the I'll, I'll tell you this. So could they get a bye there could, were, could they get a bye week? Yeah, they could absolutely. They got a better get a record than the Steelers. I don't know that the Patriots right now are better than them. 
they definitely have an easier schedule than the Patriots do for the rest of the season. What are the Pats? Are they seven and three? They're eight, eight and three. three. They're eight and three. So the same record, and they beat the Texans. They have the tiebreaker, but it doesn't matter if the t- Texans finish with a better record than them. That tiebreaker doesn't matter. I mean, the Texans do have the easier schedule. Yeah, I mean that's this is what's crazy. Yeah, um, I mean they could end up with a bye. I, I I can't figure this out. I don't think that every week I keep thinking, oh, they're going to fall on their face. And I bet against them, and I just keep looking like a fool. Yeah, I don't understand this team. I don't I don't get it. Like what? Normally, it is elite teams that, that run off, run eight, off in a row. eight in a row. This is not that. This is like they were gifted like the five Colts or game, six straight games. The Cowboys game, the, 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 there, there's – Couple of more that they they just I don't the Redskins game oh the Skins game like they they just literally uh, the the Broncos game where he, that's the one yeah, where he uh, run it off like laughing at the other coach didn't it wouldn't, uh, didn't they beat the Jags yeah but I think they beat the crap out of the Jags I don't think so I think it was like another one of those super close maybe, games maybe they didn't maybe they didn't so either way either way it was well there was a lot of them that were just kind of like here here you go not you last, can have this one not last night my friend. Not last night. So, Cowboys game, did we say that one? Yeah, we said that yeah. one. No, they definitely squeaked that one out. All right. Makes no sense. Well, we invoked my Patriots, so i got to bring up Tom. Tom now has a new record, another record. <laughs> he is the career leader in total passing now. He's pretty good. Well, that's if you include, like, postseason. Oh, that's only if you include postseason. Why would you not include postseason games? Are you penalized for playing in the postseason? These other quarterbacks are rewarded for not making the postseason. Well, no, 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 no. Uh, but if you include like Peyton Manning's postseason, then he's still got more, right? No, he doesn't. This is the this is the record. Oh, I thought that no, the... Peyton has more regular season. Breeze has more regular season. But if you include all of their yards, which I have no idea why we have a record book that doesn't include the postseason. When those yards should count double, those yards mean more. I agree with you. I just so we I was reward, confused. We reward Breeze and Peyton for not making the playoffs as often as Tom, not making it as far as Tom in the playoffs by giving them records. For so what? What regular is this record? Is it, only. is it all-time passing yards? All-time passing yards. I thought Drew Breeze just that was a regular season record only. Drew, oh, the one Drew that Brees? he got was regular season yes, only. Drew Brees has the most That's regular where season I got record yards. Off. And this is what I don't like. Why do we have two records? One that includes the postseason and one that doesn't. You have yards for a year. You have yards for a career. You have yards not just for the 16 games that you played. And we also need to remember that Tom missed an entire season as well, which is why he's behind those guys Did, in regular um, season. Well, tell me this. Um, Wes Payton missed a season, too. So, I didn't see anything about this. Yeah. Did uh, the NFL did, didn't like to talk about Tom unless he's doing well, some But scannery. I mean, did they bring him a uh, a certificate out nope. the same way that they didn't did stop for the game? No, Drew Brees? no. I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to bet everything that the Patriots and Tom both said we're not doing that. Like we're not that's, stopping the game. That's, we're that's not. not how we do things in New England. Yeah, that makes sense. There's there's absolutely no doubt. And that's not a knock on Brees or the Saints and how they do things. But that is just not going to fly in New England. They don't. They don't reward regular season or not regular season individual stats at all. Makes sense. Makes sense. What uh, what you got up next? Cowboys have won three games in a row. I, I feel <laughs> like I owe they're the Cowboys an apology. You're not I mean, they're not going to get it. No, I'm not going to do that. No, no, I, that would be way too big of me. Um, <laughs> they are six and five. They're they're creeping. Ever so closely to costing me a, a large sum of money. Um, yeah, they got to get to nine to do that. They got to get they got three more. They're not gonna get one this week. They got New Orleans coming. Yeah, to they the got town. New Orleans on Thursday. No, nah, they might get it. Then I'll look like a fool, but I doubt it. Um, what do you think of the Cowboys? So they got lucky with with when they the, played the Skins. That's right. The Skins the Skins game was was a weird game. They. They didn't do great. The uh, Eagles game was a weird game. Well, it's, it, on, on the schedule, it was weird. It was coming off of a loss to the uh, the uh, Titans. That's right. Um, 
and then the Falcons. Those are the three games. And the Falcons, Eagles, Falcons, and the Falcons skins. have been dreadful. Yes, the Falcons have not lost three straight. So it's not like they're really beating good teams. But I don't know that they play many good teams after the Saints. That's I mean that's the caveat is is I think they've got the Eagles again. I think they've got the Giants again. I don't know that they have a whole lot left on their schedule that's scary. So they are now three and one with Amari Cooper. And I'll be damned if Cooper does not look like he was worth a first round pick right now. He he's looking really good and my mockery of that is is looking a little bad. I will tell you, I don't know that Cooper's a difference. They're finally giving the ball. To, to Zeke. Zeke. Yeah, they're feeding Zeke, and, and it and is I, working. And I think that's opening the passing game up just immensely. Now, Cooper obviously helps that as well. Having that threat be there um, is, is a big deal. I, I I still don't believe in this team, but that, that you rolled off three straight. I mean, three straight's a, that's that's no a joke. Pretty, pretty, pretty good deal. Next, we'll move on. The Bears just don't give a damn who their quarterback is. No. They are going to line up across from you and beat the hell out of you. On the show, you'll be proud of this. I don't know if you actually watched last week's show since you were on uh, vacation. I rewatched. I, I didn't watch it then, but I watched it. I uh, I called Eddie Jackson picking off Matt Stafford because I, I had a feeling it was going to happen, and sure enough. And, and, but it's not just Eddie Jackson. No. That entire defense, they have hit in the draft. And God, they, God they've hit in the draft. And they hit with Khalil Mack. Correct. So much. Like, I, I, cannot, I cannot overestimate. This is the best defense in the league, and it's not close. And yeah. it's not – and I love Mack. It doesn't even have to be, like, statistically. It's just you, you oh, know. Yeah, no, they're just scary. Yeah. And I, and I love Mac, and, and I talk him up more than anybody else, but they are good at every level of the defense. They really don't have a lot of weaknesses. Their secondary is good. Their linebacking core is good. Their front seven, their front four. Like, like they are scary at all levels. Now, I know the game is still an offensive game. People are still going to score 20 and 30 on them because that's the way the game is. Yeah. But – but, man, there ain't a lot of people coming in to drop a 40. Nope. And that's become a common thing against everybody else. And, man, their offense is looking pretty good. I mean, Chase Daniels. Now, they only scored 16 offensive, offensive points. points. That's fine. But that's okay when your defense is putting up points. Oh, yeah. No, you, are you getting turnovers? Even if the defense isn't the one scoring, they're, they're getting you in short range, easy field goals, yeah. or, or, you know, not big drives to, to, to get points. Um, situations. I I liked them before the season started. Man, this Bears team could be scary. Are are they good enough to take out a team like the Rams? Are they good enough to take out the Saints in a playoff game? The only thing that scares me is Trubisky in like just a real prime time. All the lights are on him situation. I mean, they would I think literally the need is. everything to go right. And quite a few things to go wrong for New Orleans to go into New Orleans and win a playoff game, right? Yeah, I mean you'd need it. I mean, would they be double be digit a... underdogs in New Orleans for a playoff game? Probably not. No, no. that's a lot of points. But I mean, I it I think shut. it'd be seven. But I think they could get beat by them. <laughs> I don't think they'd be <laughs> the underdogs Saints, by that. The Saints could beat anybody by that. Um, and so can the Rams. Like if yeah. the Rams are hitting, the Rams are are the most hit or miss team because like. I, I do think this defense would match up better against the Rams than the yes, Saints. Yes, I do agree with that. I don't know that there's a defense in the in the league that can match up with the Saints. No, I don't either. I used to think that about the Rams, too, but they have not looked unbelievable. They're, they're not but they're world, still winning games. Like, yeah, they're still winning games. They got one L, and that's against the Saints. That's it. Yeah. They, so, they just do what they got to do to win. That's it. All right, we'll move on. Quickly, we'll roll through the last three. Bells for Jacksonville and Blake Bortles. Boy, that's a – they really didn't do any pre-planning at all at, at, for this quarterback situation, did they? Like, Cody Kessler is the only other option you got? Really? I think that was intentional. I think they didn't want competition 
for Blake because they wanted him to have confidence when the season started. And they didn't want anybody when, when you've got him. somebody and I just that's when you've just got wrong. somebody that you that needs <laughs> that kind of confidence, then you got a problem. Oh no, no, that's not the guy you want. If he's no. that fragile, that's not the guy you want. Like if you were scared of competition, you've already lost. So before the season started, Jacksonville was one of those teams that people thought, man, last year, I mean, they legitimately could have won in the Super Bowl. And they were like a hot pick to make the playoffs and win the Super Bowl again. I think we live in a world where we assume if you're good this year, then you're just going to be good next year and the year after that. I, I don't think that's real. And I'm trying to think what team is playing way above their head right now that next year could be 3-13. and 13. Because that's what Jacksonville's going to end up being. They're going to be, you know, 4-12 and 12 or 5-11. and 11. Like, they're going to be bad. And they, they were a lot of people's dark horse to make the Super Bowl, or, or at least to make the AFC Championship game again. Like, they looked like they had everything going. And they just fell apart. I think the Bears next year could be that. Could could fall to, like, 5-11, and 11, I think, something like that. I think, I think Houston could be that. I think Houston could absolutely do that. I, because, I, think about it. And like I think those, Chargers could do that. Those are the two teams. Those, I mean, these are the teams that I like. I mean, Houston, I haven't, but. Chargers, maybe, but remember, like when when you move to the top of your division, then you got to play a first place schedule the next year. Oh, that's right. Yep. So, like the Bears right now are feasting on yep. the Jets and the correct. The, you know, so you, the, Bear, the Bears and Houston will have to play. Yeah, different schedules. Yeah, because I, Houston I was see. four and twelve last I mean, year because of all the injuries. They that's got right. to play the easy schedule this year. We, we just assume that it's going to be linear. We just assume that it's going to, if you won this year, you should be a good team next year. And more times than not, I mean, half the playoff rosters always change over. But it's not just half the playoff rosters. How many teams make the Super Bowl are, are you know, are really, really elite level good in the next year? I mean, the Eagles. Look at the Eagles. Yeah, and they actually I mean, won it last year. Normally, the it's the Super team Bowl. that lost the Super Bowl. I don't Bowl. think they're going to finish with a 500 record. I think they're going to be below 500. I think it's entirely possible. They look really bad. No, they're just not good. I mean, they won against the Giants Sunday. They don't look good. No, they. I mean, like, they, thank God you're playing the Giants. Yeah, they they should have they should have lost that game. Yeah, I mean, so it's just it's just anyway, we'll, we'll move on. But I just think it's kind of incredible that these teams we think before the season start. Oh man, they have a chance to be pretty good. They weren't, and what they did last year is just complete fraudulent. Yeah. So, last thing, Big Ben still has road game woes. Yeah. Thankfully, two weeks ago, he played Jacksonville, which is the only reason he didn't lose that road game. And (laughs) the other caveat is that is Russell Wilson is really, really good at football still. Um. I was way wrong. Was it the ringer on, on that all offense, or maybe Sports Illustrated, or so, there was it, whatever it was. There was an article discussing like in the NFL, if you've got a great quarterback and a great head coach, like the rest of this stuff will get figured out. You can you can sometimes just figure it out. Their offensive you, line was yeah. supposed to be one of the worst in the league. They are running in their in their running back situation. All those guys were hurt, and nobody knew if any of them were good. And now, like, it doesn't matter who's running the ball. They're they're running the ball down people's throat. And a lot of that's because you're afraid of Russell. Oh, yeah. it They're just really impressive to watch. They were mediocre at the beginning of the season. They are not. They're a playoff team that on wild card Sunday, you don't want to line up against them. No, you don't. That's So that was one of my gambling picks last week. And it went against everything – that yep. you are supposed to gamble on. West Coast going east, yeah. noon game. Yeah, no. I mean, like, all, uh, all of the statistics say well, and it's, you take you know, the Panthers. Seattle is uh, number one in, in rushing offense. Well, the Panthers are number three, but the Panthers also had the number eight rushing defense. Correct. Like, everything kind of lined up statistically. For this to be a Panthers game. Yeah. Yep. And, no, and I'm with you. you could just feel it after the Green Bay win. Like, Man, I feel like they got a shot to win the game, and I'm catching them at three and a half. I, I know they lost both their games to the Rams. They played them really close. I, I would, if I was the Rams, I would not want to play them a third time. No, I agree with that. I, I would not want to play them a third time. There's a chance they're going to, because I think whoever they play in the wild card weekend, 
I, I think they got a chance to upset whoever that team is, whether that's the Bears, maybe the Rams, if the Rams somehow lose, which I don't think they're going to lose their their position for a bye week. But, they, you know. Who else? Uh, what, what's the oh, it would be the one? NFC East, East team. It would be the Cowboys or the Skins or the Eagles. <laughs> one of those teams is going to win. Right now the yeah. Cowboys actually look good, so we should just assume it's going to be them. But that could be different in three weeks. Boy, don't you know Cowboys fans would hate to see that? Oh, they don't want to see Seattle in the playoffs again. No, they don't want to see Seattle. No, they don't want to see Seattle. No, Seattle coming to Dallas. Oh, not not after the way the last couple of times have have gone. Like, no, they're they're out on that. I mean, Russell Wilson is he's just playing out of his mind. Yeah, he's another guy that if Drew Brees and Patrick Mahomes aren't doing what they're doing, like we're looking at him saying, "Man, look at this season he's putting up." Yeah. Anyway, that's a recap. That works. Go visit tunicatravel.com, minicureseverything.com. Follow us on social media. Hit that subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube.